his bed where he was lying. And the bed was not against the wall because the vibration had moved it away. So he commanded, you demon, come back. He said, when I slept on this bed earlier today, it was against the wall. Now come back, move it back to the wall. The window blind began to shake. The bed began to vibrate. And the bed was vibrated back to the wall. And the demon left. Those are the kind of people, listen, listen, this generation is waiting for. The manifestation, not of babes, but of sons. Manifestation of sons who would manifest their sonship. Not babes who crawl up and down seeking for help all the time. There is a place for that. But a time comes. We must leave some things behind. The Bible says, press. Keep pressing. Feeding on God's word. Fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. Praying. Staying in God's presence. You begin to see Jesus as he is. And as you see him, you are becoming more and more like him. More and more like him. Until you get to a point where witches will not dare your house. Please reach, lift up your hand. Say, I will get there. Let me give you three reasons why we've got to keep pressing to maturity. No, number one is this. God has a timetable for your life. God has a timetable for your life. God has a timetable for my life. And that timetable is to bring us to a point where we'll fulfill our destinies here on earth. God has, has a timetable for your life. That timetable time, time, time is to bring you to a point where you will fulfill your purpose on this earth. Hear me well. Nobody is on earth for, by accident. Everybody is here for a reason. For that reason, for which God put you on this earth, he has a timetable. That by this time, you would have become like this. By this time, you become like this. Now look at what the book of Hebrews says. Hebrews chapter, chapter 5, verse 12. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12. All right, see now. It says, for though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God, and you have come to need milk, not solid food. You notice that first line? Though by this time. Everybody say by this time. So Paul was telling them that the Holy Spirit expected of the Hebrews, Hebrew church, the Christians uh, in the book of Hebrews, that by this time you ought to be teachers. So there is a, a time that God expected them to have moved away from being babes to becoming teachers. So I read that to say to you that for you too there is a time God expects you to be able to handle certain matters by yourself. What babes may not be able to handle, people who are mature will be able to handle it. Some of the things that deceive babes will not deceive adults. If you at your age now, I'm saying uh, is it boji boji they call it? You, you know those things you used to call to frighten children. What do you call it? Ojuju Kalaba hair. I said, Ojuju Kalaba will catch you. Will you be afraid of that? But if I tell your, your son, he may be afraid. So what can easily frighten babes will not frighten mature people. What can sway them, get them to be, to be tossed up and down? If you're a mature person, it doesn't move you. Like if I'm sleeping in the night, said that came and gave me meat to eat. He's wasting his time. Because all I'll tell him is that what you gave me to eat is the body of Christ. Now I'm talking of from my level. Oh, please don't try it if you are not there yet. I'll tell him that thing you gave me to eat is a fresh revelation, unpackaging of new revelation from God. That's what you gave me to eat. Because there were times in the Bible when God wanted to unveil certain mysteries to his people. He gave them some things to eat. So if the devil tries it on me, 
Instead of me declaring three days of fasting and praying, I know it will not work. That curse will be turned into a blessing. Since the Bible says, press to maturity. Press on to maturity. Please lift up your hands. Say, I will press and keep pressing to maturity. And why we do that is because there is a timetable God has for all of you. You cannot afford to waste time. The time God expects you to be an adult, a mature believer. If you remain a babe, there are certain requests you would make that you may not get answers to. Because God expects you to use your faith. He expects your faith to have matured to a point where you'll be able to take your stand and get answers, get results for yourself. Imagine me praying at this point, oh God, come and take that devil away from my life. Remove that mommy water spirit from following me. Oh God, come and help me, help me so that this mommy water spirit will not disturb me again. That's a waste of prayers. I have the right, the authority to demand that that evil spirit leaves me alone and it will obey. It's in your hand, the authority. It's in your mouth, the authority. But you must grow in maturity so that you'll be able to use what is already your own. There are things to leave behind. The Bible says it's time to press on to maturity. Because when you ought to be teachers, if you remain babes, the honor that is due to teachers will not be given to you. Am I talking to people here? So why do we need to press on to maturity? First reason is this. God has what? A timetable for your life. Just as Satan has a timetable for your life. And the prayer we pray every time is that may God disappoint Satan's timetable for your life. Can I pray that prayer for you? How many of you know Satan has timetable for your life? That's why he brings delays into our lives. He causes some people to miss their times, miss their seasons, miss their opportunities. So that what they should have gotten 10 years ago, they are struggling to get today. I've told you before, I'll remind you again, one of the most precious things in your life Satan would want to disrupt is your time. Because money you lose, you can get back. If you lose your health, you can get it back. But once you lose time, that's all. Only God can compress time. Only God can be able to do that. So he wants to do everything that's certain and to disrupt your time, to steal it from you, to cause delay, to cause you to miss opportunities because he's aware God has a timetable. If he can cause delay in your life, Satan knows you will not be able to fulfill your destiny. So a journey of 40 days, he causes delay and it will take you 40 years. All those people who perish in the wilderness, none of them got to the promised land. Satan disrupted their time, disrupted their season. Daniel prayed. The devil stepped in, delayed answer for how long? For 21 days, Satan loves to mess up God's time and season for your life. And that's why, brothers and sisters, you must be aware, nobody has forever to do God's work on earth. You've got to be conscious of the time that God has set for you. That's why, when last did you people see me in School of Healing? When last? Last, that's a long time ago, isn't it? Because God has raised people who will be able to do that? So now I am doing more by doing less. And that's how to gain speed in ministry, to gain speed in life. I mean, I used to spend hours and hours praying deliverance for people. I mean, I can stand with somebody until that demon bows out. I'm not going to shift base. So I'll be there for hours. But God help me. Today, if you know what the demon make you go in just uh, the spoken word, then let it remain. You can go back with it. But for me to spend one hour praying for you, I don't go do that. Too. 
I don't go through that. I know that time, time is precious. So God has raised people that they will stand by you, stand with you. Even if not three hours, they will stand there until that demon goes. I'm aware of the season I'm living in. That's why priorities have changed. So what am I saying? God has a timetable for you. Yours is to stay close to him to ensure that you are keeping pace with the timetable he has for you. Jesus would tell some people, he said, my time has not yet come, but your time has come. So there is a time that you must not miss. Because once you are in sync, is that big English? If you're in alignment with your correct timing, things will be beautiful. Not long ago, I saw one woman, <laughs> elderly woman, a grandmother, sitting in uh, primary one with her grandchildren, great-grandchildren. They were teaching them A, B, C, D. Now, I appreciated her for that, for that, her humility and her tenacity. But I think she has lost 75 years. This is something she would have learned 75 years ago. My own father got his degree after all his children have graduated from the university, except one. There were six of us. So he sent all of us to the university. He could have gone, but he wanted to train his children. And after all of us had graduated, except our last um, uh, sibling, he decided to go to the university. Just to prove to everybody that he too has brain, he can get a degree. And he went and he got a degree. In ABU here, one of the teachers was his own student in secondary school. And after he got the degree, what did he do with it? Nothing. Because retirement had come. May you not miss your season. I pray the powerful prayer for you. You must say amen. Very well. May you not miss your season. May you not miss your timing. In the name of Jesus, may Satan not disrupt your timing. Hear me well. God has a timetable. Sit down. Satan has a timetable. You to have a timetable. But wisdom is when your own timetable aligns with God's timetable. That you walk close with God enough to know that this is my season. This is my time. This is my opportunity. The time for me to be a babe has gone. Now it's time for me to stand strong as a teacher, feeding on solid food, not milk, not soft, soft, you know, stuff. Saints, better take what I'm saying to you I heart because some of you will remain slaves to prophets for the rest of your life unless you hear what I'm saying. You will jump from one prayer house to another prayer house. One prophet will tell you to do some very, very, very obnoxious things and you will do them. In Kenya, just some few months ago, one pastor was able to convince his members to lock up themselves in an isolated place and they were dying one after the other and burying them there until the government discovered and you see elderly people, mature people, that were camped there, waiting for the coming of Jesus, dying without food. Because a prophet convinced them that will happen to those who are babes. But when you know the word, and you grow in maturity, you know the voice of the Holy Spirit, you know the leading of the Holy Spirit, which prophet will lead you when your eyes can see? You can see the truth. That's why Paul said it's time to press on to maturity. I appreciate that before we get to there, we can help ourselves. Amen. That's why we organize School of Healing, to help ourselves, uh, help carry you. But the ultimate goal is not for you to keep dignifying one great prophet. It's for you to come to maturity. Number two, 
why do we need to press on to maturity? It's because unless you press on to maturity, life will keep treating you like a slave. I know you are not a slave. You are God's redeemed child of God. You are God's redeemed. But life will continue to treat you as a slave unless you mature. Raise your hand. Say, I'm not a slave. I'm not a slave. Say, it with, I'm not a slave. So life should not treat me like a slave. I deserve honor. I deserve dignity. I deserve some respect. Respect that is due to those who are sons, who know they are sons, and who walk in their sonship authority. So life should not treat me like a slave. But unless we mature, brothers and sisters, life will keep treating you like a slave. Galatians 4 verse 1, what does it say? Galatians 4 verse 1, it says, But I say that the heir, as long as he's a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all. He's master of all. But he'll be treated as a slave if he remains a child. Can I say it again? How many of you are here? He's a master of all. Heir to the inheritance of the father. All things are his. But if he remains a child, undeveloped, immature, he'll be treated as a slave. I see the huge difference between a slave and an heir apparent. A slave is someone who has no right. Can toss him up and down. Tell him when to sleep, when to wake up, what kind of food to eat. Tell him how to dress. To get anything in that house, he has to beg for it. That's a slave. Oh, no. I cannot be a master of all and life will treat me like a slave. But that will happen unless you press on to maturity. Please lift up your say, I am a master. Say it again, I'm a master of all. Please say, say, I'm a master of all. Who is a master? Somebody who commands honor, commands respect, has some degree of dignity and respect. Master of all. But life will treat you like a miserable slave unless you mature. So one of the things you must set before you all the time are your growth goals. If you understand what I mean. You, know, growth, you set growth goals that in this area of my Christian work, I want to grow. In the area of prayer, I want to grow. In the area of giving, I want to grow. In the area of uh, witnessing, evangelism, I want to grow. You set those goals and you pursue them. You go through the scriptures that relate on the goals you have set and begin to meditate on those scriptures, pound those scriptures into your human spirit until you begin to see yourself develop in those areas. Saints, life will not give you the respect due to you if you don't press to maturity. So your goal as you come to school of healing is not just to get miracles. That one is good. But the noblest of goals you can set for yourself is to mature. Mature in the love of Jesus. You walk in forgiveness easily. Mature in compassion and kindness towards others. Mature by displaying the nature and character of Jesus as you relate to people. Maturity, maturity, maturity. Not just miracles. God in his mercy and compassion will give you miracles. Are you getting me? But I don't want to remain in a position where any time I need something, somebody must give it to me. But it's like you've seen people who use crutches. You know, they can't walk unless they have those crutches. So there are a lot of people in church for the past 30 years, unless there are crutches, human beings that help to support them, they can't walk. No, 
Paul said there are things to leave behind and there are things to press into. Now, I'm not saying this to condemn you. I'm saying it to help you. I'm really tired of seeing people who have been Christians for 30 years that cannot pick a scripture they can stand on and get answers. Now, hear me. Let me share this testimony with you. You've heard it before. But to give you an example of what I'm talking about. When I prayed for a madman and Jesus set that madman free, in the night when I was sleeping, my left hand became paralyzed. My two legs moved. My right hand moved. This one was gone. And I know what paralysis means. Because I can differentiate between paralysis and when somebody just slips on your hand and your hand becomes numb. That is what doctors call dense paralysis. Not a flicker of muscle. Severe stroke that is almost irreversible. Not a flicker of muscle. Just because I pray for a madman. So what did I do? The options are many. Hmm? You can complain and say, God, is this what I will get for doing your work? Are you not the one that said in your name will cast out demons? Is this how you reward me? You can say that and that paralysis will remain for the rest of your life. Or you can start crying. Oh God, help me. Oh God, help me. Oh God, help me. Oh, the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Maybe that will help. But as I lay on the bed, a scripture came to my mind. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. It says, you shall tread. He said, behold, I give unto you power or authority. To what? Tread on serpents and scorpions. And over all the power of the enemy. And Jesus added something. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Everybody say nothing. nothing. Now, is that spirit of insanity, does it, is it included in what Jesus said? Yeah. Nothing means nothing shall by any means, whatever scheming or strategy it employs, it won't work. And when that scripture rose from my spirit, rose from within me, I knew it was settled. I closed my eyes and I slept off. The following morning, the hand started walking. Is that one not better? That you have a God who will never fail his people and you know him enough to trust him. You have a God who will stay and stand by you and you can trust him. You can trust him. Have such quiet confidence in him that Satan himself is amazed that things like this don't move you. Saints, let's press. Let's press. Let's press. Press to maturity. So that henceforth, the kind of testimonies we'll be hearing now, the testimonies like one brother shared in this assembly years back, he went to get a, a job in Edo State to complete a building that was under a curse. And he carried some house people to follow him to go and do the job. He said when he went there, the first night they walked, and in the walk that first day, in the night when they slept, some mysterious rats came. Rats. And beat the right toenail of I think four or five of those house workers. The right big toe. All the rats that beat them beat the same place on their bodies. Just the right big toes. But they did not touch our brother. So he took them to a clinic. They bandaged the wound. Those rats came again the following day. Beat through the bandage. The same right toe through and let them bleed in profusely. You see that they didn't know there were other places to bite. So those house men said they decided they were going to come back to Zaria. But those rats did not touch our brother. Don't you love such testimonies? That there is something they see in you. Something they recognize in you. That sets you apart. And 
part of the testament of that brother is that he, he normally uses anointing oil as his Vaseline, as his cream. The house man came back. He decided to look for people there in Edo State to help him complete the job. He said one of the days in the afternoon, he was on the roof, walking on the roof, when one black cat ran towards the building and was staring at him. He knew what was happening. You see, this is where maturity and our understanding will help you maintain your honor and dignity as the redeemed of the Lord. He looked at the cat and cursed it in the name of Jesus. Instead of coming down and stopping the war, he cursed the, the cat in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands. I have authority. Come on, stamp your feet. Say, I have authority. He cursed it in the name of Jesus. And the cat started running away. And this 911 lorry crushed it to death. That same day, the woman who vowed that they would not complete that, that project, she died. Those are the testimonies that mature people give. And those are the kind of testimonies you too will give. Yeah. I didn't hear your amen. Well. Yeah. So why should we press on to maturity? Why? Hmm? Because unless you do, life will treat you like a slave. Life will treat you like a slave. Please tell your neighbor, say you are not a slave. So you are a king. You are a master of a life. Amen. Amen. So I wake, awaken in you the authority of a master. Jesus, confide it on you. Take your place of authority. Let the devil respect who you are and whose you are. What Abraham told Sarai when, when Hagar was messing her up just because Hagar had become pregnant and Sarah had been seeking for the fruit of the womb and had not gotten it for many years and what Sarah was seeking for Hagar got easily Hagar became important in her own eyes and no longer respected Sarah so Sarah went to Abraham and said it's your fault it's your fault see this woman that I gave to you to sleep with now she's pregnant she no longer respects me. And Abraham told Sarah, don't you know that this, this girl is your maid? You are the madame in this house. Even if she's pregnant, she's still a maid. She's your slave. You are the one with the covenant right. You are the madame in the house. So she's under your authority. Do with her as it pleases you. I like that. I like that. You know, that was that thing trying to mess you up is under your authority. It's under your authority. But you need men of God, teachers of the world, to remind you, to let you know that that thing messing up your home, messing up your body, messing up your children is under your control. It's under your authority. You can do something about it. You can do something about it. And when Sarah took her place of authority, Hagar found her level. And she had to run away, run away from the house because Sarah made it too hot for her. It was there out in the wilderness that the angel gave her sense and told her what to do if she returns home. I encourage you to take charge of your domain. Amen? Your body, your home, your business. Your business. Take charge. Take charge. If you get up there and you see them, they sprinkle blood around the place. Let them know that there is blood that is speaking on your behalf in the highest place of authority in the throne of God. That blood speaks for you. So the blood of chicken and the blood of goat will not be able to stop your business from progressing. Pour anointing oil there and speak to it in the name of Jesus. Nullify the power. You have authority. 
Yes, you do. The final reason why you should press on to maturity is because life will toss you up and down unless you mature. Unless you mature in Christ. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 14. Ephesians 4 verse 14. How many of you have your Bibles here? Very, very few, you see. Okay, let's read it. Ephesians 4 verse 14. One, two, let's go. Even read, you cannot read. Can't you read it? Let's read it again. One, two, three. Now you see the three things there that move people up and down, toss them around. What's the first thing? Every wind of doctrine. What's the second one? Trickery of men. Has trickery of men stopped? Is it getting worse? So people who are children, what will trickery of men do to them? Toss them up and down. What's the third thing there? Cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. Those things are still in operation. In fact, they've gotten worse in our day and age. So if you remain a babe, Remain a child. That's how they'll be tossing you up and down. So somebody will say something today, you believe him. And do something so crazy, you'd wonder, have you sold your intelligence away? A young man told me one time, that a prophet met him on the way and uh, started to prophesy to him and tell him about himself, about everything about him and told him things that will happen in his future and told him he would give him a sign that he should pour saliva on his palm and he poured saliva on his palm and from the other side of the palm the saliva started coming out. Is that not a wonder? And so that prophet told him, all the money you have in your pocket, bring it. Because these evil things that I prophesied about you will come to pass if I don't pray to stop it. So that man emptied his pocket. But the money he had was not enough. So the prophet told him that if he goes back home, he should collect all the money he had, put it on a China uh, plate, cover it with um, what do you call this thing? The plate you use to cover things. Not calabash. Uh, tear. What do you use for tear? Hmm? Okay, whatever. You should use it to cover it and then rub Vaseline on the edges. And they went, looked for money, borrowed money, put it and every dime he placed there disappeared. And the man gave him an instruction to come back with a bottle of water. That he was going to pray on the water so that he would use that water to break the curse. So how we got to Med was I saw him on the street of Lagos with holding a bottle of water. I said, who are you looking for? <laughs> he told me it was a prophet who told him to come and see him with a bottle of water. Which address did he give you? No address. You can imagine somebody walking on the streets of Lagos <laughs> with a bottle of water. If you know Yaba, where the Yaba Tech is, he was going up and down. An intelligent graduate behaving like a fool, tossed up and down by the trickery of men. They will do that to you unless you mature.
That's why the Holy Ghost enjoins us to press on to maturity. If I'm talking to you, wave your hands. Let's leave some things behind. Now, I'm not condemning you for where you are, but don't remain at this level. It's okay to come seek for help. It's okay. But a time will come. You'll be on your two feet looking for people to help. Looking for people to pray for. Looking for demons to cast out. Looking for curses to break. It's well with you. In Romans chapter 8 verse 19, it says creation, the expectation of creation eagerly waits for the revealing or the manifestation of the sons of God. So creation is waiting for sons, not babes, not babes. Sons to manifest their sonship. I will stop here, then I will lead us to pray. And I want you to pray like somebody who knows that God honors your voice. That you have access, as much access as I have, through the name of Jesus, you have access to the same Heavenly Father. Your voice there is as important as the voice of any archbishop. Your voice there. It's only you must come with confidence, you must come with faith. That when you say Jesus, in the name of Jesus, it carries as much weight as if Jesus himself is praying to God Almighty. Because you are praying in his name. And as we go before God, there are certain things that would have to leave you by force. They must go. Who will drive them out? You will drive them out. You will enforce the change. You will enforce your liberty. Babes cannot retain freedom and liberty. This is the truth under heaven. I know there are times we pray, this demon that has gone out, it, I command it never to come back. Well, Jesus said that in some cases. But what the Lord said is, if you cast a demon out, it will come back. It will want to see, is there still space for me? Any place available to occupy again? And if it discovers that there is available space, the prayer we pray that the demon should not come back will not work. That demon will go and invite several more wicked spirits because it knows there is vacancy. What should be filled by the word of God is empty. So what you pursue in life are not just miracles, but maturity. The Bible says, press on. I hope I'm talking to people here. Punch your neighbor and say, press on. Press on. Now, I can come and pray prayers here. I am a prophet. I mean, okay, I have prophetic grace. I see things. I declare things. And I know God brings them to pass. But and when they come to pass, you clap for me. But for how long do we remain at that level? Especially those of you who have been born again for the past 15 years, 20 years? Uh -uh. So tell your brother or sister, say, press on. What do you press on to? What do you press on to? To mature. When you get mature, you will not be tossed up and down. Today I believe. Tomorrow I'm not sure. Today I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. And then when one small symptom attacks you, you say, ah, Shay, I thought I was healed. Maybe I was not healed though. Tossed up and down. Today I believe, I believe. And then tomorrow Satan slams you with something to steal the word and you change your mind. But when people mature, they are steadfast. They are stable. They can resist the devil steadfastly. They don't shift their position of faith. Can I pray for you? That situation you are passing through, 
will hear your voice of authority. And whatever wants to bring you to shame, it will hear your voice of authority. You are a master of life, a master of all. And we need to remind you that you can use your position and get honor back to yourself. It's well with you. Jump on your feet and say, I have authority. Stamp your feet and say, I have authority. Now say it loud. Say, the devil will hear my voice. My situation will hear my voice. And there will be a change. Because there is a God in heaven who will back me up. All right, I'm going to lead you to pray now. We're going to use Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 verse 5 to pray. Acts of the Apostles chapter 9 verse 1 to verse 5. Help us, media. All right. Then Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest. Now, see the quality of the man that was coming to attack Christians. Go back again. Go back. Verse 1. Breathing what? Threats and murder against the disciples. Now went to the high priest to collect authority to go and destroy Christians. Next verse. And ask letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus so that if he found any who were of the way, whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Next verse. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. See that first part again? Of verse, okay. Everybody say, as he journeyed. I'm not hearing what you say, as he journeyed. Shout it well. Say, as he journeyed. How long was the journey? I don't know. But he started from somewhere. Well prepared, well armed. On a mission. On an intention. As he journeyed, he came near. He came near. He came near. He came near. And then suddenly, there was an interruption. A light shone around him from heaven. Next verse. And he fell to the ground. And heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Okay, so we use that portion of, of scripture to pray. Okay, there are people who have journeyed, journeyed with evil intention. Okay, they visited some altars, carried your names here to collect authority to come and harass you. No matter how far their journey has been, even if they come near, their mission will be aborted. He said, nearly does not kill a bed. He came near. He came near. But he didn't succeed in his mission. So you are going to pray. Everyone on a mission of destruction in my life that have collected authority from the devil and his agents, ask God to block their path to frustrate their mission, to interrupt their journey. Can I say it again? Say after me, say, oh God. Say it louder. Say, oh God. Everyone on a mission of destruction in my life block their path, frustrate their mission, interrupt their journey. Some of you will hear testimonies from this prayer you pray. Lift up your voice now and pray in the name of Jesus. Every mission of evil, every journey of wickedness, Lord, interrupt that mission. Interrupt that journey. Father, interrupt that journey. 
Lord, disrupt frustrate their plots. Frustrate their plots in the name of Jesus. Come and pray like you know. A change is about to happen. Something is about to shift in the name of Jesus. Angels have been mobilized on your behalf. We truncate that mission. We abort that mission. We cancel that mission. No matter how close they have come, let God interrupt that mission. Oh, oh. My sister, you pray. Destroy their plans and agenda. Only man, every woman on assignment, on a mission against my life. Lord, let it frustrate their plans. Lord, frustrate their mission. Disrupt them in the name of Jesus. There is a God in heaven who will answer them. Oh, Oh, he will answer to the address. Oh God in heaven, answer them with fire. Answer them their church in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. That man had serious determined intention to hurt God's people. Not only that, he collected authority from the high priest. That's the highest religious authority. He collected letters from him. So it's now a clash between the authority of the high priest and God's authority. So lift up your right hand. Any authority. No, I am praying for you now. Any authority under God's heaven, any authority from any altar raised anywhere, altars that boast that they have brought many down in the past, any authority that has been spoken against you, against your progress, against the progress of your children, they are contending with the highest authority, the one from heaven. So I decree that every authority assigned against you, let them collapse in the name of Jesus. We bring them down in the name of Jesus. Amen. We command their journey interrupted in the name of Jesus. Amen. No matter how close they have come, they will not succeed. Amen. Number two. Those assigned to cause you pains and loss. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh God, meet them before they meet me. Touch them before they touch me. Before they see my face, Lord, knock them down. I don't know if you believe the God that did that can do it again. Before Paul got to his destination, he encountered the God of the Christians. So, Lord, before they see my face, show them your face. And before they touch my children, touch them. Hey, if you believe God will hear your ah. declaration, raise your voices oh and make God, declaration. in the name of Jesus. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, in the name those of that Lord, have been those sent who have been assigned to cause pain, to cause me pain and loss and in my life. Pain and discomfort. Lord, meet them in the name they meet of me. Jesus. Answer them, oh God. Meet them before they meet me in the name of Jesus. Knock God is down. hearing you. Knock ah. them down. Hey! Knock them down. Knock them down. Knock them down. Knock them down. 
before they touch your children oh god shock them down before they touch from their high horses get them down before they touch my before they touch my wife, before they touch my interest, before they touch anything that has to do with you, knock them down. Father, knock them down. Before they spoil your business, knock them down. Before they touch my business, stop them before they touch my ministry, before they touch my life, before they touch my body, before they touch my ministry. Before they touch my business, before they touch my father, father block their path. Father block their path. Father obstruct them. Father destroy them. Father knock them down. In the name of Jesus. All those who are careers of the mission of darkness, let light shine from heaven. Lord, disorganize them, uproot them, cancel their ventures, cancel their plans. Cancel their intentions. Cancel their plan. Lord, frustrate their plans and agenda. Frustrate all their calendar against. Spoil, oh God, their purpose and plan. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody shout, Jesus. Jesus. or something now. Please lay your hand on your abdomen. You're going to decree. Whoever has made you carry pregnancy that is not your own. Pregnancy means you conceive something. And often what the enemy wants you to conceive is something evil. He's waiting for the appointed time that you give birth to that problem. I see a few of you here. You are carrying something. The devil is just waiting. The time is ticking. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. For the day you will deliver that problem. But you are permitted to abort that pregnancy here. Whether it's sickness or accident or loss of a loved one, any pregnancy Satan has conceived and is waiting for maturation time that you deliver that thing. Go ahead, raise your voices. I bought it now. We are bought it in the name of Jesus. I have and bought everything the enemy has stolen. The power vested in the name of the Lord. We cancel it in the name of Jesus. We are bought you in the name of Jesus. You will Shabbat not be a fool. You will not come to pass. In the name of Jesus, every pregnancy of the I abolish it in the name of Jesus. Every pregnancy of pain, I abolish it in the name of Jesus. Every pregnancy of salvation, I abolish it in the name of Jesus. Every pregnancy of frustration. I am not in the name of Jesus. Please say that. Yes. 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 Every pregnancy of evil that Satan is waiting for the right time. I am not in the name of Jesus. 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 In the name of Jesus. Amen. If you believe it's working, let me hear your amen. Amen. Stretch forth your right hand towards me. Whatever the enemy wants to conceive in your life and is waiting for his own appointed time for you to give birth to that evil, that disaster, that sickness, that loss, whatever it is that he has programmed on the authority of the name of Jesus the Christ, we cancel it in the name of Jesus. 
we are bought it in the name of Jesus. We decree holy miscarriage to every evil pregnancy in the name of Jesus. And if it is your own, Satan took it away. We decree a restoration back to you now. Receive it back in the name of Jesus. One lady called me some two days ago. She was sleeping innocently in her dream. And then she saw somebody. She came, somebody came to touch her, her abdomen. And then from the abdomen, touch her womb. Then remove something from her womb. This is a girl who is not yet married. So it's like Satan is setting up his timetable for that lady. But I told her, I say, I'm happy that you saw it. If you saw it, you can change it. Because a lot of people don't see. But if you see it and it's evil, you can abort it. So I'm standing in agreement with you. Whatever is conceived in your life that is not of God, you are bought it this school of healing in the name of Jesus. Amen. Final prayer point. Did Saul complete his mission? Did he get to Damascus or not? Eh? Did he get to Damascus or not? He got, he got there now. He got there. It's only the mission changed. Instead of mission of destruction, he now became a preacher. Promoting the same gospel he wanted to kill. So the prayer you pray is, Lord, turn their curse into a blessing. You can't stop them from pronouncing curses because some of them, that's what they live on. That's what they live to do. Just inflicting pains on people. Anytime they see you crying, they're happy. That's what they feed on. They get money to send their children to school by pronouncing curses on innocent people. Lord, I can't stop them from pronouncing curses or raising their altars wherever they are. But anytime they pronounce the curse, turn it into a blessing. That's what God did to Balaam. Balaam opened his mouth. Ah! Instead of a curse coming out, God turned it into a blessing. So if they say you will not carry your own children with their eyes, you will give back to twins, twins, twins. Until you tell God it's enough. The one shop they are envious of because you have in Sabongeri, wait until you go international. That your complimentary card will have seen address of Dubai, address of London. Turn their cross into a blessing. Saints, please take this serious. There is a God in heaven who can make this happen. He has seen your tears. It's now time for you to feed on his fatness. So raise your voices and pray that Father, in Lord, the name turn of their Jesus. cross into a blessing. Lord, every cause turn their attacks into a blessing. Turn their attacks into a good. Turn their attacks into a good. Turn their evil to an advantage. 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 Let their move be to our advantage. In the name of Jesus, every move of the enemy, every move of Satan, turn it to our advantage. Turn it to our testimony. Turn it to our celebration. Turn it to our coronation. Turn it to our promotion. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Let 
Turn for our promotion. Turn for our good. In the name of Jesus. Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Can you lift up your two hands and begin to appreciate the Lord? Thank you, Lord. You are going home with something. Give him thanks. Thank you, Lord. Give him thanks. It's a season of jubilation. Thank you, Lord. A season of laughter. Season of freedom. Thank you, Lord. Season of deliverance. Total complete deliverance. Give him thanks. The story has changed you, so give him thanks. Give us a song. I'm great. He's a God. Sing with me, I'll pray. He's a God. And always sing, I'll pray. Pray. He's a your voice. coming to the school of healing for the first time for the first time and you came to be prayed for today anybody like that you All right. any other person all right any other person okay the rest of you you can be seated so you stretch forth your hands and then we'll do it together. This, this man used to be one of the foundation members of CTC. Eh? Then you, eh? Yeah, then, you, then we didn't see you again. I don't know how many of you know him. Very few. You know him, eh? Uh, you know him. No, I mean when he was in CTC. Yeah. Let's pray for him. He has some tumors here. Let's ask him the mercy of the Lord to speak. Jesus. 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 Oh, Jesus. Lord, I speak your mercy. 
into the life of this man. I speak your mess. I ask that in the name of Jesus, this tumor will dissolve. It will melt out of this body in the name of Jesus. And the spirit behind it, I bind you and I command you, out! Go! Go! Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. God, thank you for doing that. God's healing power flows through you. His mercy overwhelms you. In Jesus' name.
next Tuesday with a testimony. Yeah, yeah I know they talk oh, unless uh, the unction is on me. If you believe, it will happen. Because I saw where the Bible said Jesus gave power to his disciples. How did the power enter them? Eh? How did it enter? He just spoke. He just spoke. He said, as you go, heal the sick, cast out demons. And what he said, they believed it, it manifested. So you two will come back next Tuesday with your testimony. Yeah. The spoiler of your joy, that spoiler, from the root, it is cursed in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Even if it comes close to touching you, like we read about Saul, before it touches you, the curse will become a blessing. Yeah. It is well with you. Put your hands together and let's give Jesus. All right, take your seat. Hallelujah. Please, if you don't mind, stand up and stretch forth your hand towards Papa. Pray that the Lord will keep increasing the grace of, upon his life. Ask that God will increase him, the Lord will strengthen him as the days now you have the right you can see him not to give him your birthday prophetic declaration pray that the lord will keep stretching him the bible says as your day so it's your strength be father we thank you for our father lord we ask that to strengthen him lord we pray for one up ministerial platform in the name of jesus lord you strengthen him in the name of jesus father we thank you jesus martin we pray Jesus, Martin, we pray. Please, you may be seated. Hallelujah. Something new is happening and will kick off tomorrow. The Peculiar Women Annual Convention. Hallelujah. It's, keeping, it's kicking off tomorrow by 3 o'clock. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we we'll round up on Sunday morning. Please, you are invited to be here. Don't miss any of the sections. It's women convention that includes men. Hallelujah. It, it, it includes men. But next week, Tuesday, somebody say next week, Tuesday. Is our annual program for School of Healing. <laughs> Next Tuesday and Wednesday. It's going to be for two days. What did we see there? Wonders of wonders of God. So when, when you are coming next Tuesday, next Tuesday, it's going to be 10 o'clock to 12. But on Wednesday, because we perceive God wants to do some terrible things, righteousness, it's going to be from 9. 9 to 12. 3 hours. So that we have enough time to do what God wants to do. Please, the ambulance are going around. I've not seen the ambulance here. I'm not seeing the ambulance here. Don't, don't take more than one. Give to your invite people. Take more than one. Tell them that next Tuesday is awesome. Daddy has prepared the foundation for next week's Tuesday. So we have an idea what's going to happen. 
So please, don't just take one. Take more than one. Invite people to come and partake from the wonders of God. Praise God. Please, this prayer daddy has led us to pray. It has not ended yet. I am going to beg daddy. I want to extract or I will just pick the, the audio and transcribe. I, I wrote them down, but I want to get the actual word. I will transcribe the message and I will extract the prayer point. I will post them today. I'll post them on School of Healing WhatsApp page. If you are not on the page, God help you. I'm going to post them on the School of Healing WhatsApp page. Go there and pick it. Please, it is not a prayer you pray now and you say, oh, really? Pray it until we get the answer. I will extract those prayer points. Hallelujah. Please let me on our feet. Just lift up your voice and appreciate God for all that he has done this morning. Appreciate God for the great thing he has done. Thank God for the insight that you are going on to press in for maturity so that when the enemy see you, you become a terror to his kingdom. Father, we thank you. Give you all the glory and honor. Bless be your name. Jesus, mighty name, we pray. Shall we share the grace together in fellowship? Second Timothy 3 17. That I glory will be perfect, totally furnished unto all good works. Shalom. See you tomorrow.